Hello crafty friends and welcome to today's 6x6 paper pad video. Today I'm going to make two A6 cards, one using each different paper pad, but they're going to be the same techniques, same design ideas, but we'll just see how using different papers makes them look different, if you see what I mean. You don't need to have these particular paper pads to do the cards that I do today. Use any paper that you like. You could use 6x6, 12x12, scraps, or you can use backgrounds that you've made yourself. So this is my little book of card sketches where I jot down ideas of things to do. And I think I'm going to do this one today. So we've got a vertical band on the left hand side, some kind of element, not necessarily circular, there and three maybe more little elements around the edge and there'll be a sentiment somewhere as well so we're going to work with that idea so for the more neutral color paper pad i'm thinking of having my vertical band made from this dark brown paper that's got a nice white pattern on it and i want something fairly solid as well i think from my pastel pad. Maybe we'll go for green. So I've cut two strips roughly the same width. This one's slightly bigger because I wanted to get it symmetrical with this in the middle and then half a this leafy bouquet thing coming in from each side and then this one I wanted to get symmetrical or as symmetrical as I could get it and that's the size I ended up with. I'm not going to glue those on yet because I want to create my focal point and then when I know what size that's going to be I'll know where to stick my bands. I am thinking circles so I've cut a white circle out of cardstock that I can lay here. And then I'm thinking a smaller stitch circle in another pattern on top of that. And I'm thinking something paler and I like this kind of yellow ochre damask for that. And with this one, the pink or peachy abstract florals because it contrasts nicely, I think, with the green. So I will do a smaller circle out of each. So I think those stand out well and provide a nice focal anchor point. Now I've got this label die, which I think scales well with the circles. It covers up some of the circles, but not too much. And for this one, I'm going to bring in a green. So I've got a third colour. I need to cut this carefully to keep the pattern straight. And then for this one, the third colour, I'm bringing in the purple. And I think they all, well, the colours obviously went nicely together because they've come from the same paper pad but you've got a sort of more solid and a more detailed pattern either side of it so i think that's straight i've got a little bit of low tack washi tape there to hold it in place so i think that's standing out nicely on there but this label is quite possibly ever so slightly getting lost and it might need another layer to separate it. So I'll get another piece of smooth white cardstock and cut another label from that. So this one will get an extra label offset like that. And I think that just helps that stand out a bit. I will cut another one for this one and just see if that does anything. Yep, I think I'll keep both extra white labels there. So I'm thinking for the little cluster of embellishments here, I'm going to do flowers. So I'll use this flower die and cut from some of the, well, this is a bit more of a solid pattern. This one's going to bring in some blue, but I will get my inks out and find the coordinating colours that I picked out at the start of the series and do a bit of inking around the edges of the flowers to give them a bit more of a solidity, I think. So we've got two lovely bundles of flowers there and I'm going to make three for each card but in three different sizes. So I need to choose big and a small at each size if you see what I mean. So I'll keep the spares to one side because I might need those. 
So these are the little swatches I made at the beginning of the series where I matched the papers to inks and things that I've got in my stash. And I think I'm going to use ice spruce on this one because it's kind of the closest. And on this one, I'm going to use tumble glass to make it bluer. I've got my little sponge daubers here and I'm just going to add a little bit of ink around the edges of each little flower. And now to assemble the flowers, I just add a little bit of glue to the middle. That's far too much. Take that off to the middle of the bottom flower. Need a little dob. And offset the petals to make them look nice and full. I won't add flower centers yet. I'll do that the very last thing because I'll probably use Nouveau drops. Right, we're nearly ready for assembling, but now I'm thinking I need a sentiment ready to go on top, and I'm probably going to put it on top of my label. It's just started raining here, so that's what you can hear pattering around in the background. I'm going to work quickly to wrap it up so we don't end up getting too much rain noise. But I'm going to use this happy birthday cutout die and I've cut two happy birthdays which I'm going to make coloured backgrounds for. So I'll just use the ice spruce that's on the dauber here and tumble glass. I might need a little bit more of that one because it's a very light colour. And I'll cut out a strip of each to put behind the sentiments. So I've got some high tack PVA glue here. I can dip my happy birthdays into that and then place them over the coloured bits. And now to assemble my cards, I'm going to use the minimum amount of glue that I can get away with using so that it doesn't warp my card blank and add that right over to the left hand side so that I've got some white space here. Put my circle there so there's a sliver of colour. I don't actually probably won't be able to see that when uh, the flowers are on it but that's where I want my circle. Now for this circle and I want the pattern to be vertical, horizontal, I don't want it wonky. I'll just double check that with my T-square ruler. Yeah, that's about right. But it's not quite in the centre of my circle, so we'll just pull that over a little bit. Okay, I think that's okay. Now I'm going to stick the label to the white label, offsetting it to give it that drop shadow then add glue on the back of that and I can place that there. I just want to check that that's going to be okay there. And then some blue flowers here. So yeah, I think that works. Before I stick my flowers down, I'm going to curl them a bit, press down in the middle using this embossing tool and a little bit of foam. Um, I think I might also just sort of curl the leaves over a little bit as well, not the leaves, the petals, and then have a little bit of glue here. Dip them. And place them around the edge there. And then dip my happy birthday into the glue. And that is going to, I think, about there. And now for the flower centres, I'm going to use these pale gold Nouveau drops. I don't think I need any more Nouveau drops on there. I think it's okay as it is. And now 
I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this card and come back in a minute and show you how it turned out. Right, there we have two cards based on the same sketch, made using the same tools, but different paper pads and different inks that coordinated with the different paper pads. And I really like the way these have turned out. I think both paper pads work with this design. So I wonder which one you're gravitating towards, the pastels or the neutrals? I think I'm gravitating towards this one because I think it's a little bit more striking with this dark brown paper in the background. This pastel pad, as you might imagine, doesn't have any kind of really strong coloured papers in it. But if you did want to do something with pastels on your focal point, you could always use a more impactful or stronger, more saturated, say, paper from another pad or a solid or a washi tape or ribbon, something like that in the background. Right, I think that'll do for me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you more paper pad ideas that you can use in your card making. If it has, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.